we thank you we thank you you are mighty we glorify you we glorify you ability we thank you Jesus we thank you Thank you for the testimonies, the sign, the acts of his wisdom. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Now pray and say, Father, I am here again. Let the dew from heaven come upon my life. Lift your voice and pray. They go from strength to strength. Everyone that appeared before the Lord in Zion. They go from strength to strength. Wisdom to wisdom. Grace to grace. Please keep standing. Let's just read one scripture. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you first to God. Please keep it there. Okay. I commend you to God. And then to the word of his grace. And the Bible says that word is able to, number one, build you up. Build you up. And then to give you. The inheritance is yours. But it takes understanding to be a possessor. It says that the word is able to build you up. And give you an inheritance among them who paid attention before you among them who have obtained these realities it says i commend you to two things one a person god like one would give a child to a caretaker he says and to the word of his grace i like you to pray from the depth of your heart and be serious while you are praying say father i have come to you and i have come to encounter your word it has capacity to build my life it has capacity to make me a possessor, a possessor of possibilities. Lift your voice and make sure you are praying. Lift your voice, make sure you are praying. Tonight, let your word prevail over our hearts in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. From the pages of my heart. Let my worship begin that never ends. Sing it again. This is from the pages of my heart. Let my worship begin that never ends. To the God of all flesh. You're my God. God 
tonight change our lives let it be an encounter in your presence in the name of Jesus let the sick be healed tonight let the oppressed be delivered grant us illumination access to light in the name of Jesus let us encounter your anointing and let it create possibilities in our lives in the name of Jesus God bless you please be seated it's good to be back I apologize last week um, for the first time couldn't make it for the miracle service but I want us to appreciate Pastor Jimmy alongside all the leaders that were with him. It was such, such a powerful time last week. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you, sirs. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I welcome everyone tonight. It's a great time. Let me just quickly acknowledge the assistant chaplain of Adama State University. He's here with us. Thank you so much, sir. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Wonderful people. They are the people who make me always want to go to Adama State. I mean, they would so, so pamper you. God bless you. If you are from Adama State, make sure you be like them. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I don't know if they are around. My dear friend told me he was going to be here. Dr. Lucas Atlong from Joss. Is he here? Oh, he's there. God bless you. And then his friend, Dr. John. Am I right? God bless you. Please thank you. Let's honor them. Wonderful, wonderful men of God. The medical doctors also. Thank you, sir, for coming. The Lord increase you in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy to yourself and say, I receive understanding. Say it again, I receive understanding. Turn it into prayer. Lord, grant me great understanding tonight. Understanding. The entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight I'm going to be touching on a number of things and then we'll pray. Um, As I have traveled, especially in recent times, I have, I have been humbled, let me tell you sincerely, at, at the prophetic words that the Lord spoke to me many years ago. I have seen it in regions, campuses, and I am truly humbled to see that when God speaks, um, He is reliable. It pays to trust him it may not look like it but if you trust him he will surprise you hallelujah and I was sharing I think with our dear school of ministry students yesterday during the lectures and I was telling them that one of my personal goals in this life is to inspire my generation to love God to seek him and to be revealers of his possibilities this is my inspiration to my generation I hope that one day a generation will look at my life and be inspired to love God to seek him and not just to stop there that their lives will become portraits of the possibilities that a man can demonstrate if and when he's one with God are we together now and so all the teachings that we bring here are an attempt a contribution you can call it to open us up and help build that we rise to that point where we not only know God but we understand his ways it's, it's very arrogant for me to have to be the one saying this but let me tell you sincerely I love and I care about every one of you from the depth of my heart it, it shouldn't be me saying it but I say it because it's the truth it matters to me that your knowledge of God is rich it matters to me that your conformity to the fullness of all that he is and he represents is rich in your life it matters to me also that you gain intelligence spiritually 
that you come to a point where your life is furnished with thorough understanding you are not unfruitful in the knowledge of the truth you can know god as a person and still be unfruitful in the knowledge of the systems of the kingdom you hear me say this i will keep repeating it until it becomes your convictions because the operation of god on earth in as much as the bible has revealed to us is systemic are we together god is the god of systems when you encounter his person then he grants you the ability to understand his ways his methodology his systems the results that we seek are dependent on our comprehension and engaging of the systems accordingly are we together so on one hand we are coming into the knowledge of god intimacy here and there but then we must understand his ways listen let me tell you this our destinies the quality of our destinies on earth not only depend on the love of god for us but our ability to understand his ways of doing things are we together now to be able to replicate his reality in our environment that's the whole idea of kingdom come it's not a mystery is to be able to sustain the ability to make your life become an expression in every area every area remember there's a scripture we've been playing around with very recently the bible says second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 it says according as verse 2 says grace and peace be multiplied to you you know through the knowledge of him of our god and of our lord jesus christ verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us how many things all things that pertain unto what apostle peter would have just stopped and said his divine power hath given us all things that would have been enough but he says those all things are divided into two categories the matters that pertain unto life and the matters that pertain unto godliness everyone say after me life godliness say one more time life godliness there are matters that pertain unto godliness for instance your spiritual growth right the the issues of the spirit when i open you up to the dimensions of the spirit the anointing understanding the ways of god digging into the boils of the spirit to be able to come up with the things that help you to conform better to become a spiritual man these are the things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life the well-being of your children matters that pertain unto life is that true the ability to not be under the yoke of this godless system that has designed a structure to strangle any intention to be serious with god there is a system intentionally built that's what is captured in the mystery babylon a system that was built with intelligence intended to frustrate any desire to be serious with god and so the system operates in many ways by making men busy by making men poor by making men mediocre by making them frustrated to lack a sense of purpose that those who are not of the world will continue to pay tribute in cash and in kind with their time and with their lives but there is a bailout system and the bible says they are matters that pertain unto life no matter how anointed you are when you watch your child being driven out of school it will frustrate your christian experience now i have said it again and again we do not serve god just because of tea and bread listen very carefully we don't serve god because of the things that he gives us we serve him because of who he is and our love for him but he has so designed in his wisdom that in serving him you encounter other things the ability to attend to the matters of life because in doing so you demonstrate that he is a good father number two in doing so you demonstrate dominion number three in doing so it affords you the time to further commit yourself are we together there is a conspiracy it's always been there but it's been reinforced again 
this system of satan occupying men their time their life to never allow them serve god do you know why many of the people we call god's generals were powerful they gave god time that is the commodity that satan is fighting today in our generation time you never know anything without giving it time you meet a full animal he can whisper something to his cows and they will behave themselves because he spends time with them you don't wake up and come one morning and tell a cow move left these are animals our time with god is under attack hear me carefully our time with god that is the principal factor that sponsors our knowledge of him is under serious attack and if a generation does not stand up to say satan what are you doing our children you see these little kids running up and down they will no longer have time for god there is a system that is derailing men away and is doing it in a very subtle way it's not happening overnight you check the schedules of the average man there is nothing about god there aside from one religious devotion that is done in 10 minutes god is not you can't give god 10 minutes of your time and want to host his glory you come back to sleep you are tired and it's not like you were doing anything kingdom satan system he manipulates men like he's playing a chess something is wrong brothers and sisters this is i'm starting tonight with a clarion call something is wrong our generation really needs to seek the lord but not under the conditions that the devil has put us in you're not going to seek the lord when your rent is about killing you you will just dance around and give thanks but not to seek the lord it's amazing how we have to sit down and specially create time for god we don't specially create time for money we are seeking it all our lives we don't specially create time for fame we don't specially create time for a living but when it comes to god there has to be an extra effort it says as for me and my house it didn't say we'll be christians we will it's a commitment as for he was not saying as for a pastor who is now into this burden called ministry say as for me and my house i have made a decision that i will serve the lord our generation is under serious threat look how hard the devil has made it for an average young man to be established even at age 40 he has not even started establishment if he's to live 80 years that's half of his life gone and don't forget that when he's 60 70 his strength may not be there again and the bible says that we should serve god in the days of our youth so he rubbishes the days of our youth so that we spend our entire life looking for what to eat what to drink trying to educate our minds trying to earn a living and then we give him some little time devotions here one program one emotional crusade here we will never it's impossible to institutionalize god to a generation that way if we want our children and our children's children to serve the lord let me tell you we must make god a big deal in our generation not a factor you add to your life if you are a christian but the basis of your living I'm concerned especially about our teenagers most of them don't know God again ask them when we were teenagers one young man who is not even serious just a Sunday school goer can recite 30 verses it doesn't matter whether he loves God or not but you ask one of these are young ones to recite even John 3 16 that unbelievers who were passing around church knew you ask them and hear what they will tell you but ask them what is the latest app the latest computer game huh the latest uh, what do we call it all these funny things they are not wrong in themselves but something is happening to a generation if we don't pay attention we will cry in old age and say lord did i fail my generation 
these are my contemplations the level of non attention to God is becoming a thing of concern we are going to churches Sundays churches are full with members Wednesday activity I'm talking of seeking the Lord not as a profession for a man of God where he gets salary at the end of the month as for me and my house I will serve the Lord most people who serve the Lord is because they have given up on the matters of life there is no hope of sending any child to school there is no hope of anything they know they would die whether or not they serve the Lord so they say okay since I have two years left let me just try to do something no our generation has brought an option be poor and fail and serve the Lord or be blessed and be occupied trying to make a living who gave us that option as for me and my house I will serve the Lord that one day I will come to your house on a weekday and hear sounds of worship from your gate not cassette you and your four children are serving the Lord and I say by two o'clock I thought you should be earning a living and you say he showed me another system now we are serving the Lord and visitors pull their mouth while they are languishing in the squalor of rebellion and watch you say pastor alpha you are serving the lord jedediah is 12 years and his teenager friends are there all around smoking their destinies away and this child is there serving the lord it is selfishness and wickedness that makes us to forget the generation that is coming I'm sorry to say it and I, I love our parents we have many of our elderly people here I love them but one of the mistakes that our fathers made was they were very selfish they did not remember that a generation was coming so all they did was to educate their minds and look for food to eat there's hardly any heritage given to a young man every young man starts almost from ground zero spiritually financially the time a young man should use building his spirit is fighting warfare because the chains that have held him at 30 he must spend one year contending for victory as for me and my house i can't claim it for everybody but as for me and my house we will serve the lord how many of us here got born again directly by our parents how many of you some of us were just around and salvation by the mercy of God met you in one Sunday school. Some of you salvation met you at the point of death. Did you know that for many of us we never had the talk about God. We had godliness in a religious way. Every time there was Bible study something happened. A sound in the zinc demotion that was imminent or something that sponsored some emotional reaction. Say as for me and my house say as for me and my house i will serve the lord are we together yes it matters that we make this decision right now that we will serve the lord we will serve the lord i've been doing a lot of counseling lately especially for our dear ones that are getting married and i look at them my first concern is will your home serve the Lord will your life serve the Lord let me tell you there is a wicked Babylonian financial system there that was designed to make sure you don't serve the Lord how can one man do five jobs because he's trying to pay rent it's a cause you wake up by six do a job to 12 and satan makes sure his stipend comes from there and then you start another one till four and your body is weak but you know if you don't do this you will not eat well and you start another one and in the next five years that man dies and leaves seven children look at our dear mothers okay, something is wrong go listen to me i came tonight to talk to you from the depth of my heart it's a vow i've built myself that's the truth 
you bail yourself through a commitment of obedience but my job is to share this with you that if we don't wake up and join ignorant people or this proud religiosity that only focuses on the matters of godliness and leaves the matters of life one day you will stand and watch you will be a mighty man of god with a big parish and your wife and you will watch your children with pity a letter come and stand before you we've been expelled not because we smoked not because we drank because the means to make it happen was not there you will be in a church and the owner will come and lock the church while service is going on and drive you out as for me and my house everything that must be put in place in my life to allow me serve God I will put in place if you can make that commitment tonight we have achieved something so far it says the things that pertain unto life and godliness and those things the equipping comes through knowledge 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 there is no shortcut to greatness there is no shortcut to glory sacrifice has always been the non-negotiable condition the sacrifice of your commitment your life your resources your attention you may not have the best of, of atmosphere and environment, but there is a determination that superimposes those things. For the sake of my generation, I will present Jesus. Are we blessed? The things that pertain unto life and godliness. There are some of us, and it really grieves my heart. As young as we are, condition as we call it has taken away our focus from god there are some of us here early 20s yet you have to be sending something home god is calling you into ministry but the focus is not there the moment he's speaking here comes the bills here comes the whatever and you know that your poor aged mother who couldn't go to school our fathers many of them largely disobedient and proud people although they don't have any result you see that and they yoke all of that the average home right now has many relatives waiting for their elder brother to marry because he's the one who will continue the education for them if all you see is poverty you are not seeing well you must see an attack on a generation if all you see is sickness you are not seeing well you must see an attack look at the long-term effect of that a day will come our men will no longer go to church because they have to work all day on sunday to add to it it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow so by the time the father is not there to raise the child the devil positions somebody who is now employed who now teaches that child if, if, whether the father is a pastor or a bishop is not the issue look at the children of men of god This is a cry and a burden that is boiling in my heart. We must redeem not only ourselves, but redeem a generation. We must start thinking transgenerationally. Don't say you are too young. If the entire scope of your life is just me, my marriage, my home, my this, no, you must start thinking. You see that? When Koinonia started, this young boy seated here was in the loins of prophecy. Today, he's now hearing. You will be surprised. One day now, this small boy you see will be going to secondary school. One day, he will be writing jam. And you will open your eyes and see that I made a mistake I cannot correct again. Many of us seated here. The reason why our lives are delayed is because we have to pay the price that was made by our parents before we start building our own lives you've not even started building your own life yet you are paying a debt you know nothing about then when you are 50 and have paid then you now start your own life it's an attack listen to me very carefully it's an attack an attack on the integrity of god an attack on a generation that can seek god 
all these revelations that we dish out in the body of christ will soon become useless if we ignore these things because there will be nobody to hear them again all the dimensions of heavens and the stars and the constellations we would talk to ourselves as men of god on stage while everybody runs around everywhere trying to make a living make a living is a cause there are many of our parents is in their deathbed they will confess that i was called to be a prophet to my generation called to be a prophet they would have been at the dimension of benikin today imagine how many destinies would have been changed if they answered the call but they were hijacked and they only see the visions in their parlor god shows them global events and they are there no grace and influence to effect it you read about these generals some of them can hold one year of prayer you know sometimes men of god hold prayer meetings is it not those who have eaten that will come if i hold a prayer meeting five days in a week pastor alpha you're a lecturer except god grants you grace should you can't be effective you are only effective when you have options and that's what satan wants to make sure a whole generation does not have no option no option there is an attack on our generation we must open our eyes and see it this is not just the issue of money this is not the issue of influence this is the issue of the destiny of a generation the prophetic destiny the prophets labored in the bible and prophesied about our generation and they died not seeing this now we have come in the scene and many of us are just playing games with our lives doing the same old things that brought pain to us so that our own children will cry i want to serve the lord not because i'm a preacher i want to serve the lord because my life was meant to be a revelation of his glory i want to serve the lord i want to be the one to coach my children not sunday school son sit down let me teach you the bible not police station teach my child how to live not a rehab center teach your child or daughter how to live is god speaking to us tonight i'm challenging you there is a serious burden in my heart if we do not arise for our generation let me tell you very soon you will be laboring on your child and the lawless children of another person who is not listening to what i'm saying will be there to become the strongholds we not only must care about our children we must care about our generation one child 90 percent of our children are influenced to be bad they are not bad on their own you are laboring to train them there is another godless man somewhere and they all meet in the same place and cain dominates abel and make our children feel sorry for being christians you look at many of us here you are looking at me now look how ashamed you are if you are in the social sphere now you are in church you are jumping but once you are there are you drinking no i don't drink are you this no, you and they look at you oh, what a child this guy his eyes have no and you feel so guilty for loving god and being attention and paying attention to him it's like the in thing now is rebellion you are a man to the degree to which you are stubborn lawless rebellious and proud that's what we are marketed to a generation that is the portrait of a superhero that our children are learning if you must be a superhero be rebellious be a bully be everything but a christian the average young child is not interested in church again again you invite them find out how many teenagers come for koinonia you'll be surprised there are young people there are old people but the teenagers don't come it's not because it's night they stroll around and then go around and do a lot of things and satan comes he wants to capture that generation but in the name of jesus christ there are people who will say no way there are people who will create a spiritual barricade
that as the priest of my home no way satan there is no entrance huh that gentleman who was talking about aleko or whatever it is look at now that a time will come your child will be saying mommy we are from benway but what is that you say i settled it already don't worry it was well settled that that discussion just one day i will tell you about the story that once upon a time in our village people don't reach 30 but i stood as an altar and i settled it are we together and one of the deceptions let me begin to build my discussion tonight now one of the deceptions that i think god is granting me grace to connect tonight is what i call the danger of imbalance write it down the danger the catastrophic danger of imbalance it not only matters that we communicate truth it matters that the truth we communicate must be the whole counsel of god everybody say the whole counsel of god the whole counsel of god is a definition of all his intention everything he desires for a people within a time period to know about him represents the whole counsel of god for that dispensation and one of the things that you see satan playing out right now is an attempt to use religion as a tool that sponsors imbalance in our quest seeing then that he cannot stop us from having an appetite for god he now begins to sell imbalance to believers and let me tell you something brothers and sisters imbalance is as dangerous as falsehood imbalance is as dangerous as a lie let's examine a few things before i talk about imbalance i shared one time about three great errors that the lord revealed to me in the body of christ if you remember when we were talking about the body of christ let me do a quick recap that the lord began to reveal to me that there were three great errors in the body of christ the first error is found in first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 he said the spirit speaketh expressly the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith we're examining the first error now giving heed to seducing spirits and then the doctrine of devils everyone say the doctrine of devils another word for this is apostasy apostasy a deviation from god's known pattern of operation apostasy the first error that the body of christ has to contend with is the error of apostasy listen to my message the apostate church apostasy a deviation from the truth and also a deviation from god's pattern two things there a deviation from the truth is called apostasy but a deviation from the pattern of communicating that truth is also apostasy even if the information is correct but the spiritual system of transferring it is wrong it is still apostasy are we together in god's dealings with men both the information and the pattern are important not just the information don't just say the most important thing is that i'm healed the most important thing is that i prosper the most important thing is that i get anointed no sir there is a predefined pattern when god looks at you and you are doing business with god what you got is not as important as how it came don't just say i was anointed don't just say i was prosperous don't just say i i got married don't just say i had a child god is obsessed with patterns that if you must host his glory then there must be a formation that must be according to pattern apostasy i teach that there are two dimensions to apostasy number one the communicator of the message himself not being of god 
that's the first dimension where they whether as a man of god as a businessman whoever attempting to communicate anything the plan from the beginning was deception intrinsically the communicator himself is of the devil there is such a possibility in the body of christ and in our environment not just apostate informations apostate people people who are not they were never never of god from the first place are we blessed and then number two the people the communicators of those truths may be genuine but the information they are communicating is a doctrine of demons you can be genuine sincere let me take ministry as a case study you can be a sincere man of god you love god you are not fake but the content of your communication is a doctrine that is not sponsored by the spirit of christ the bible says that some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and then doctrines of demons I can be a genuine man of God genuinely anointed by God but because of a system the Bible calls seduction are we together now I can deviate from God's way of doing things and now become a communicator I am not fake but my message is not genuine both of these cases can be classified as apostasy so that's the first error the second error that I teach is the error of individualism also the error of indifference write it down indifference what we call i don't care attitude right individualism we don't think kingdom we don't think generational we think me so if a jimmy's leg is having a problem provided it has not affected me is none of my business this is where many many men of God many many of we pastors Pentecostals especially have missed it we have missed it big time in this area we are so individual individualistic we don't care about what is happening to the body provided my church provided my life is immune for it, from it to hell with the body are we together yeah so if the danger has not come to meet me it doesn't matter if an armed robber comes to steal in a pastor's church nearby it was not my church it was not my member my kingdom financier was not robbed so pastor may god bless you if someone dies provided he's not a member of my church it's amazing how we leaders mentor people to deliberately select being in the body is not enough you must be associated with me to be able to enjoy certain benevolence that is meant for the body it's a poisonous spirit the error of indifference the error of individualism when god begins to build his army his system of operation is that he takes us beyond individualism and connects us as an organism if your leg is having pains your head can pain you because of the leg is that true um we're returning back from Kano, and we stopped at a filling station to get fuel and one guy was marketing a funny product you know these guys that market something at the filling station and he said um there's a the drug or the lotion whatever it is is for teeth <laughs> but you rub it on your leg <laughs> yes he said you don't have to rub the thing on your teeth you just rub it on your leg now that, that's a body consciousness at least i didn't buy it but he taught me that the leg is related to the teeth because we have been taught to apply drugs only where it hurts and leave other parts and he said no no let me show you another formula you can apply it in the leg but it can touch the teeth that means i can pray from zaria and god can preserve kenneth copeland because it is the body i can hear that there is an attack on a man of god and not say after all they don't listen say no no lord this whatever it is 
he's part of the body his integrity is our integrity as the body and lord arise in your mercy for your namesake but we keep becoming individualistic you as believers what is your pride our pride let me tell you the pride of our generation three things one revelation rema the extent to which you bring an exegesis of the truth and nothing is wrong with that right greek words hebrew words play around with all kinds of concordances and then dish out mysteries we love that two prophecy if i give you a prophetic word which is not bad three anointing and our definition of anointing is fall down not result fall down just make sure you hit that bench as a testament that the communicator is having something and so this erroneously become the pivot of our pursuit we're looking for revelation we're looking for an ability to communicate which is is is, is to be desired and then we're looking for an anointing to make sure when we step into a meeting people just fall up and down and when these things happen we believe that we are fine and we don't extend the scope of our alliance to god to extend beyond our personal comforts to think body in terms of administration you know i love koinonia thank god this is where he's planted me but in terms of the health of the church i am passionately concerned about the body of christ just follow me we are going somewhere tonight are we blessed the third error that i teach um, i have taught this already so is what i call exaggerated confrontation of error this is where it even gets sad exaggerated confrontation of error that means that error that is attempted to be corrected but not from a standpoint of love error that is attempting to be corrected from a standpoint of intrinsic intimidation by the supposed corrector now listen very carefully you see please come Jimin. can i use you Amen. when you see Jimin, one word you think wealth finances <laughs> right well anointing too anointing no, at least last week you saw it <laughs> praise god now watch this chances are that if god has called a jimmy to represent um that dimension of maybe the holy spirit and finances to people and i have a bias with finances either as a result of men, my mentality or my frustrations two of them can cause the same thing i can have a poor mentality or i can be secretly frustrated now if there is an imbalance in Ejimi's life or his way of communicating that chances are that because i was angry since even before the imbalance came now that i have found a scapegoat of a lapse in him i will correct it in a way you know it was paining me this is not the point is not to correct the point is to vent out pain there is a big this exaggerated confrontation is even more deadly than error itself i once had a well somewhere a man of god was talking about those who was saying they teach people how to pray in tongues somewhere you know trying to be sarcastic that man himself does not pray in tongues he doesn't believe it but there is no there's no legitimate case for him to fight it so he now routes through a church or a man of god that he sees teaching people he now uses that one exception this is how you know error is exaggerated a man of god or a businessman or whatever picks one single error and robs it off beyond the proportion of his relevance you know that the, the goal is not to sponsor correction the goal is to help manage intimidation are we together now so Ejimi talks about money and all of that and all of a sudden i'm there in my frustration and i turn and i say be careful all these guys that just talk about money all the time the truth of the matter is that i may be right in speaking about that unique situation but it's not coming from a standpoint that wants to contribute to the health of the body i am only communicating because i am intrinsically frustrated thank you sir are we blessed some of us here seated looking at me have become victims even of this it tells on how we hate anointed people it tells on how we hate wealthy people are we together now yes
and so we try everybody right now is in the ministry of correction that is the latest anointing that is going all around everybody is correcting everybody everybody once you have access to a mic and you can talk and people can hear you everybody is correcting everybody let me tell you this the greatest danger in the church now is not error the greatest danger is imbalance and this imbalance has come from this third point this is where i want to build my case tonight so pay attention so that you find out whether you are part of it and trust god to help you tonight everybody shout imbalance there is something about the limitation of Pentecostals that our Orthodox brothers and sisters capitalize on and use it as the basis why you should not be open to the things of the Holy Spirit. Then there are things that the Pentecostals use as their excuse for thinking an Orthodox lifestyle is too mean and basic and all of that. And all of them may have some sense of justification but the truth is that there is an inner anger for one another just waiting for a legitimate excuse are we together now yeah whether it is an issue of marriage or finances or fidelity or issues that have to do with um, administration and leadership whatever it is how you know that correction is not coming from a sincere point is the exaggeration exaggeration I always say you use a, a hammer to kill a fly a simple tap on that fly it would die but when you use hammer you were angry it's not about the fly the fly just happens to be what the hammer is hitting obviously that hammer was not designed for the fly it's just that the fly got in the way of the hammer and boy will that hammer hit the fly there is a spirit of pride listen carefully it looks like it's coming from god but i'm exposing lucifer there is something satan is doing in the especially among we men of god that god has privileged to have access to revelation and anointing and a dimension of the miraculous pride is gradually eating us up because we believe that because of the little results we have we have authority by ourselves to correct everybody and everything every man of god is trying to show what another man is doing wrong everyone is trying to show that this is wrong why are you praying like this the other one will say you too why are you keeping quiet when you are praying the other one will say what is the meaning of warfare the other one will say keep waiting demons are coming see let me tell you this let me tell you this listen very carefully listen carefully if we do not trust god to rise up and correct these imbalances we are going to authorize satan to destroy us God's goal is not to produce koinonia in all the earth. If God gives me an assignment and says, Apostle, through you, the gospel will get to the ends of the earth. He was talking to all the people who will come out spiritually and prophetically through my loins. Through. There are ministries that will come out of me. They are an extension of that instruction. The idea is not to turn every believer in Nigeria into koinonia. It's a failed project from day one and anybody who knows god will never be part of that failed agenda so god is not glorified when koinonia has more members god is glorified when the kingdom advances listen very carefully because right now the entire scope of our soul winning agenda is sometimes is even sheep stealing i say this because i love the body you are sitting quietly taking fresh air someone comes to preach to you you say okay i'm already born again as soon as he's leaving you another person is coming say your brother just say it doesn't matter you just listen have you have you been given um, um are you are you aware of our church services he say yes he say come and the next time you see him look how people feel guilty and blackmailed because i invited you for koinonia you didn't come and you make it look like you are the worst sinner in the whole world you are just because you did not come that's not salvation that's pressure like banks give people target bring this by this month we have begun to propose some of those campaigns and we must be careful kingdom advancement is not the advancement of a name of a church is the advancement of the agenda of god in the hearts of men and across the spheres now it 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 is important that the individual ministries do their best to be the the platforms for people to be saved and equipped but that's not the idea 
there are people it's one of the reasons why pastors never invite people to their pulpit because someone comes and in two minutes before he preaches he has said almost 90 things about his church and sometimes some can even be sarcastic to downplay the church that now invited them you hear about people who go for conferences and before you know it while in that conference he saw a keyboard is playing well he saw a worshiper singing well and the man of god will collect their numbers travel back and now call them and begin to indoctrinate them you are you you sound too good your pastor doesn't deserve you come and join a moving train we say and then the member now leaves his church to join the supposed moving train and then we make it look like god is only with us it is pride let me repeat the idea that makes you believe you are the only representation of god in a territory is pride the day koinonia believes that we are the only and even the ultimate representation of god in this region is a sign that error has already eaten beginning from me to everyone may god forbid it are we together now yes this is the basis behind the show of superiority from men of god to churches to business people imbalance imbalance the the inability to construct the truth of god's word so that it becomes edifying to you and to the body now let me teach you something the dealings of god has a side effect watch this i've shared it here that if god calls me into the healing ministry watch this because of the character and the nature of my training are we together it will require a level of meticulousness in a dimension chances are that because of my concentration i will trivialize other matters of the kingdom too they are important but because they were not captured in my training process i will assume that they are not important are we together now so when i now come up this is the healing evangelist evangelist joshua selman and i'm healing and when i see somebody in another dimension is the reason why we reject certain ministries in the body because we have not been trained you see young people come and dance and while they are dancing someone is just waving his head and say what a wasted generation simply because the way god trained you that was not captured as part of the experience of the training so you can downplay it then to mean that these are not serious things when people come to church they sleep and snore every other time until the man of god comes in now the uh, god had been moving since praise and worship you were not taught to respect it a time of worship people are rolling on the floor god is speaking to people someone has received this breakthrough already but you were trained that until someone stands on stage so if the man of god now comes and starts rolling you say what kind of church is this you don't preach here i want you to listen to me very carefully why am i teaching you this because god is helping us to be a blessing to many others are we together in balance there are many people in the body of christ whose ministries have been strangled no room to find expression simply because the man of god who founded the church the experience of allowing those ministries to find expression were not captured in his dealings with god and so because of that the moment you see any other ministry that is outside your scope of understanding you fight it you abuse it you can call it of the devil you blackmail it amazing do you know why god limits you like this so that it is in partnership with other dimensions in the body you see how complete the body is you see that so if god has granted me grace to walk in a dimension of the teaching ministry and i don't walk say in miracles and sam come sam sam walks in the miraculous it is my identifying with sam it now supplies a dimension of god that i wouldn't have seen are we together now for sam the way god dealt with him it was just vision and power so when sam comes to the stage he said look stop all this grammar of bible study let's go straight to wheelchairs he is also in error he does not know it's just that his own nature of ministry is what is desired by the masses they want power immediately 
so chances are that you will see that in Sam's church you receive miracles but there's no spiritual growth because the system he just the it was the God Almighty God that was the revelation that was given to him for you the rabbi of rabbis that's what you got so you can sit down and teach one series for one year and then i reject you i say sam all it takes is mental transformation not power people need to be leaders and then sam is saying continue there you are watching your members crying what they need is power both of them god is with them but they believe god is not with each other you see that mistake Benjamin, please can i use you again please come and then all of a sudden this guy comes he's a leader he's an entrepreneur he's a businessman and i said look all these your business principles i laid hands on somebody a millionaire's child without knowing any finance thing and all of a sudden they gave me an estate all these things you are trying to teach people is nonsense teach them power and estate comes and the members ignore this principle and they find out that estate didn't come after 10 years the man is married now the preacher got an estate but the hearer didn't get it are we together now all three of them now chances are that a jimmy may be angry and say look at this guy power 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 let's see whether you ever rise to the government this is the fight now everybody let me tell you what satan does when satan wants to destroy you if he knows there's nothing he can do about your anointing he covers you from seeing the body so the only thing you see is your church and your performance and based on that he will now use supposed loyal sons to keep you in that state the power when you came into that meeting you know i like you you don't talk anything no verse bible was not open straight to power and he say you mean it you were impressed say yes now this is a group here hiding themselves and shortchanging themselves in imbalance yet they will believe that because the man sees visions he has the entire scope of what god is doing and then he will have the effrontery to now indoctrinate his members into believing that anytime you see our teacher man or anytime you see our businessman ignore them just get power and rest and that's what is happening so we have a congregation of people today who have no regard for the word of god turn to philippians you see them just snoring once you hear so, ah, 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 you see, that's right this is i mean we are, we are in church now that's all people want and while that shout is going on the business guy says when you finish go and pay your rent shout roll on the floor your rent is the, the tribute collectors are there and you can't say he's not godly because he's rich and it's with part of the money your church was built so the pastor can't shout at him you know what it will mean to you look at the confusion now let me tell you no one of these three will admit they are incomplete it is one of the hardest things for men of god to do to admit that regardless of what they have seen they need to spread their horizon beyond the scope that was revealed to them to see the body it is in the seven lampstands that the fullness of christ was seen the seven lampstands i had a voice when i turned i didn't see christ i saw the complete church with all the dimensions when i saw the complete church i saw the fullness of christ if i had seen two of them i would see only his hands and think god is a hand then i see another church and see his eyes and think all to god is prophecy then i see another church and i see his legs and i think all in life is progress but the complete church revealed the complete christ is god speaking to us this is a revelation that will bless you beyond imagination and so Ejimi now organizes a seminar to correct people and gathers all his members and say look all those power guys don't mind them all those revelation guys the bible says money answer it that's the members answering him now all things whereas there's somebody dying in the hospital with cancer a millionaire that money cannot do anything about are we together now 
answered all things and if any of his member dare ask him and say sir why don't the power of god work in you say are you stupid am i not rich is that no power you see that person becomes a disloyal person imagine how many of us are called disloyal for asking questions pastor we don't pray in tongues in this church but is it all right don't ever ask me i am this i am that don't go and join all those riffraff roadside prophets man of god is it okay if i meet a man of god to hear the counsel of god no the word is everything just focus on the word don't let any roadside prophet come and deceive you whereas that man is in utter confusion and five minutes of this ministry can correct 10 years in his life many members would have moved forward if only they went to where the eyes of god is but they refuse because the pastor has the hand of god and they keep seeing the hand of god the hand does not see it only holds what the eyes see listen to me because many of us are starting ministry now some of us are in ministry some of us are leaders and already we are if we are not careful we're get, we getting into big error we've been mentored by all kinds of people that's why i see as a man of god if god gives you any influence over people go and pray and say lord let me not raise a people that will be defiant from your patterns i say it with all humility not to blow the trumpet of this ministry but by his grace koinonia has been part and parcel of the building and the lifting of many ministries as a person we have account numbers of many ministries that i'm not even connected to they are not my friends we could just hear that there is a program somewhere and say look we have to do something the other day i think dunamis came and they were opening their branch here our protocol department all of them they said no let's go and serve i said quickly make sure that anything that is needed let it be given my koinonia i am apostle i'm the owner of zaria god gave it to me it's my property no this is why men of god don't sleep this is why men of god yoke members with covenant swear that you will stay why will i swear why you change clothes why why shouldn't i i mean i, I should swear that what no or we now make it prophetic god told me the day you leave me or the day you do this there is a cause where this is a lie there is no cause coming anywhere anywhere just because someone is falling down when we are saying it does not mean it's a lie there is no cause anywhere even god you can choose to leave him i said before you life and death why will somebody come and threaten you let me tell you the truth i love the body but it's a lie it's our insecurity it's not the holy spirit don't blame the, the holy spirit has no part in this people stay when they are changed people don't just become loyal to a leader foolishly don't you know that in the kingdom you keep things by leaving them hmm. whosoever keeps his life shall lose it whosoever keeps his members shall whosoever tries to keep money shall but whosoever loses it for my sake are you learning something thank you sir thank you. exaggeration now let me teach you something it is true that there are erroneous things in the body but hear me correcting the body of christ is a ministry you have to be called into it the same way god calls someone to be a prophet you are called is part of the apostolic and prophetic system of governance and it's not just every apostle and every prophet that is a corrector even among apostles and prophets there are rankings and dimensions not just because you're an apostle or prophet or pastor or teacher i am pastor so 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 i read in harvard i am no no sir we are misleading people there are spiritual conditions for you to have the authorization to be shown the weakness of the body let me tell you this you can observe what you think is the weakness of the body but god can show you what is the weakness of the body there is a condition to end that level of intimacy from god where god can show you this is where my body is weak correct it hey, Jimmy, if your son or your wife feels down 
do you just walk to anybody on the street and say my wife my son has a little rashes here or my son has knife caught him here and you open your son's cloth do you do that you go to an authorized place called a hospital and even in that hospital you enter a room and if need be in that room you can pull up and you are comfortable because it is the authorized place where that matter is addressed if you pull your son's cloth on the road somebody will look at you and say man of god what is going on but if you pull your son's cloth there it is the place not every place is a place of correction let me tell you this there is a condition you must sustain as a man of god to be afforded the opportunity to contribute in correcting the body and that element is not prayer that element is not fasting that element is not even revelation that element is genuine love for the body not for god for the body you will never be given access to correct the body until you love that body you can't correct the body from the standpoint of hatred you can't correct the body from the standpoint of resentment you can't correct the body from the standpoint of error it's impossible if i hate keyboards and this guy is making a mistake i don't have the right to correct him because my correction will meet with a bias that has been there let me tell you this i travel a lot and you can ask those who travel with me i go to all kinds of churches and they do all kinds of things sometimes i am surprised when i see what people do in many churches my mind i say if i catch my child doing that kind of thing we will talk oh, we will talk seriously yet I am able to have the accommodation let me give you a secret if you look at Christ in every church you will find him mm. let me repeat they went to a tomb where there was no life and found Jesus there a tomb where there is no life yet when the woman kept looking she saw Jesus in that tomb is it in your Bible the living have nothing to do in the grave but a woman was determined to see Jesus and although her location was the grave she still saw him so that dead church that you think your pastor is as dead as whatever the day your heart is humble and you know that the builder is not a man of God but the Spirit of God one day in the confusion of your pastor he will say something that is the secret for your lifting now we who God has helped with little revelation little grace here this is what we do when we go to church we hold our bibles arrogantly and sit at the back we don't sit in front because the man doesn't have anything to say and then he comes as usual turn to the book of this and that and god so loved the world are you aware of this and someone is just nodding and say oh god i i would have listened to a message that would bless me what is this guy doing and wasting my time and you think what you are demonstrating is superiority because of spiritual level is a sign you have fallen for the deception yourself because the higher you rise in the kingdom the more you know we are products of his mercy so while you stand there and watch the man of god ramble and make mistakes and quote wrong scriptures in the midst of it you what if you really look at jesus the holy spirit will start speaking to you and say truly there is this treasure in earthen vessels you say this man may not be so accurate yet he has been pastoring for 15 years and the members didn't leave him while you who has revelation is struggling to have 10 members and the god starts revealing to you you are now seeing jesus in that weak man that there is a grace upon this man one day in the midst of his confusion he would tell you t.l osborne came to lagos and he was part of those who were helping to hold his bag and t.l osborne touched his head you said that's where he got it pastor i know you don't preach well but i just found out you are carrying something i need touch me and the man said no are you who preach very well i was impressed said pastor you were impressed with my revelation but what i need now is what you carry there is no man of God that comes to my life that I cannot receive anything from. No. That's why I see some of our fathers. I don't sit down and say, oh, revelation, revelation. There are places I travel to minister. I already know that they may not have that level of word content. But when it's time to pray, I'm humble. Please, reveal it to me. Many of us are about to lose it because 
if it is not a company of people who have your level of spiritual enlightenment they don't matter to you you will miss something because the greatest treasures you need will be hidden in that reverend that cannot speak english that reverend that is it one day god will tell you go for the capro missions program i say lord me me that i'm looking to be young what is capro how many will forest to go and win with soul when i can snap my finger i've learned the law of exemption and god says break your pride and follow them to that village you follow them to that village and you sit down and see a house reverend who has not been sick once for 22 years god will say this is why i brought you kneel down let him release something upon you before you carry your pride and be lying that you have not taken drugs for 30 years and die two weeks later on kneel down let that man give you something genuine let me tell you this one of the secrets of my spiritual growth is my open-heartedness towards the body not necessarily my perfection in pursuing god my open-heartedness that does not mean you jump at error no no when i discern grace i realize there is something this woman never built a house but she never went hungry she would tell you every pastor that rose up came and stayed in her house there is something you should receive there we are about losing that's why many of us do you know let me tell you one of the things with error once you stay in a dimension and don't open up to the body your area of strength will magnify and your area of lapse will become clear it will be clear that only your hands are growing but your head is remaining small it will be clear that you are growing in prosperity but your knowledge of god is diminishing it will be clear that you are growing in the miraculous but you don't have a heart for god by the grace of god i want to raise the balanced people that they can look at your life and see that the matters of life when they come to passion for god you are there prayer you are there not because i have all but i know how to bring all i travel somewhere and i see a man of god ah apostle you are the great man and your messages while he's saying that i'm observing lord what do i see this man has more character than me i may pray more than him but if we stand here and somebody is about to kill us i would deny christ and run but this guy will stay and die that means there is a grace for courage that i need our pastor is coming from adam our state i had the privilege they invited me i've been there three times now sir yes three times and when Boko Haram struck 2014 sir am I right and destroyed those people in Mubi it was that meeting that was like um, it was a starting point for the churches again while I preached and saw the way they honored me I asked myself a question I said with all this mouth I make if I was part of the pastors that stood before Boko Haram will I denounce Christ don't be too fast say me uh -uh. now there are protocol people protecting you but there a pastor can go out in the morning and say wife if you don't see me just know that i died for christ that means there is a grace you say the man is not praying in tongues but you who is praying in tongues you run away at a sound on your zinc this guy is standing and watching a gun do you think it is normal no by faith abel offered it takes something to offer yourself now a wise man will meet that man of god and say sir you may not have the grace to preach and heal like me but i see that there is a dimension revealed to you if i stay where i am i will raise sons that can pray but never stand for christ i need that grace i admit i don't have it i admit that dimension has been opened up to you i humble myself sir it does not make you small this is what we will never do as men of god our pride will never allow us we will hide and listen to tapes in the secret Hi. and some of you are already learning those kinds of things you never see yourselves and celebrate yourself that guy is pastor femi pastor femi of where rema which which rema ah please i came into this town i'm a man of god already who is this pastor of where under who no if you don't change from this a generation will show that there was a lapse of god 
that we did not tap into don't ever let anybody say the prophetic is not useful just because you found the word of god don't call every prophet a reef raff and a roadside prophet there is a dimension only prophecy can birth no amount of study can bring you there there is a dimension only mental transformation can bring so don't insult Mel Mel mensa otterbill and say oh these guys are just uh -uh. there is a dimension only joyce mayer can bring there is a dimension only benny Hinn can bring there is a dimension only dr lukoya can bring there is a dimension only papa kumui can bring you ignore Dr. Lukoya and demons kill you in your pride. <laughs> you die the death of a fool before your time. A man who was the best in molecular genetics and left it. Left something, went to school abroad. Exceptional in molecular genetics. And came and humbled himself to carry the cross. And all of a sudden you see him. And just say, what is all these things? We even mimic them in laughter and the demons say thank god for such a foolish generation are we together then you see a man of god papa Ia deboe can just stand i'm mentioning names because i'm saying positive things about them and because their fathers indeed may god bless you you're like i i need And you listen to td jakes and while he's moving keyboards are playing and moving and you just came out of seven days dry retreat like a skeleton almost dying i said what is this guy saying is it just to say you will come out that you can't say in one minute and while you are there in your pride slaves left africa and went to us god picks a man out of them and makes one of the best preachers you didn't ask how it happened when they traced his origin, they found out he's Igbo, a Nigerian. Are you learning? Who have you resented because of imbalance? Some of us right now, we love God, but we have been, we have educated ourselves into believing that some people in the body are not relevant for our growth. I'm telling you, you are already in imbalance especially if you're a man of god if you are hearing me and you're in this mistake change now change quickly never go back home and put men of god and keep bringing them one by one. Oh, this one doesn't have fire this one he doesn't have this ah this one i like his suit i like this one i like his this be careful there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism there is something that Joshua Selman will never see, even if I fast for 400 days. It will not be covered by a demon. It will be covered by God himself. So that I will need a Jimmy to see it. There is something a Jimmy will never see until he looks at a pastor Toby or a pastor here in Adamawa. There was something about God I learned when I went to Adamawa, sir. I, I say it. I have never seen a level of generosity from people like that women some of them old enough to be my mother and you see i'll say it till today when i go to movie they see me they start jumping daddy oh yo yo people with doctors lecturers with such depth of humility i don't know if i can do that for anybody and while they do those things i don't sit down with my pride and say wow you mean they acknowledge me this far i sit down and say lord let this grace for humility that will be upon a man of 50 years before i now die in the next 10 years because of pride do you see that god has put the remedy for our fall in the body but because we could not tap into it imbalance is a destroyer there are many families today that have no business being in poverty if they would listen to those carrying the graces it's amazing that what we resent is what we secretly desire oh i prophesy your name is divine ah man of god and so oh, yeah, these riffraffs divine whereas one day he tried to he said what's your name are you gabriel he said no i'm a jimmy and just ah he said no he 
he wanted it secretly he was just too hot and then he said no what is not all about prophesying you must be careful most of the things people criticize they test it secretly when it becomes too hot they live as if nothing happened then they create a theology ah, ah, how can one person be praying for 12 hours life is not all about prayer that man has tried to pray secretly he, he thought it's just by energy the grace is not there so he sees someone fasting dry two weeks there's a man i know in abuja i don't know anybody that fasts on earth like him one day maybe when we were doing something in koinonia and he honors me a lot i'm sure i'll bring him one day to pray that man can go for um, no food no water not that you drink water in the night dry If that man prays, even standing close to him, you will feel as if they are electrocuting you. I literally mean it. There is no deliverance case that gets to that man that goes back free. Papa! Before, I'm, no, I'm serious. I really am serious. That guy has stretched this body and brought it under subjection. The kind of power that is in that man's voice. Yet he will come to me like this and still kneel down. Sometimes I'm tempted to say, stand up, oh. You better stand up and lay hands on me. How you know you love the body is your outspoken celebration of the uniqueness in it. The moment you are ashamed to celebrate the uniqueness in the body is a sign that something about it is intimidating you. Oh, a beautiful song. Look how wonderful this guy's voice was when he was singing. I was just listening to his speech. I said who dash monkey banana let me try that thing i was in a Okuta. my voice ceased just because it was raining yes someone shouting <laughs> are we together now don't forget for those of you who know a little about me i was once a music director i'm not naive musically but now i carry my pride and try what he's doing and that's the end of it there's no coin on here for one month so i can choose to respond to my frustration by trivializing him and say it's not all about pitch the most important thing is the message no sir we need the pitch too otherwise recite a poem don't sing <laughs> it's not all about prosperity okay carry everything in your house and give to the poor the blogger who is talking is using an ipad that he bought 250,000 and say it's not all about prosperity are we together it's not all about money and there is a hot meal in your kitchen waiting for you and there are poor people there it's not all about prayer yet you have intercessors in your church praying for you so you know prayer is important it's not all about fasting yet people are fasting for you it's not all about prophecy yet you call and say uh, promise just find out whether god is saying something around this i'm agreeing with you it's just that I, i'm not i had something i just want to i won't tell you because i is bright just say help me sir i'm trusting to hear something i'm a man of god too but there's there's this the vision is hazy i'm not seeing very well what is there does it mean you are not born again a hazy vision is something that happens to everybody jesus touched people many times are we together you must reject imbalance the imbalance that comes in approaching the body the imbalance in camping around a dimension as revealed to you and ignoring the usefulness of what god has distributed in the body you must sustain a fortitude tonight to embrace there is something i've learned from our children that no adult can teach me no matter how simple and well behaved you are these children have taught something they have taught me faith they have taught me courage some of do you know some of these little children are in prayer department am i right prayer department they don't miss it so if a child can be in a prayer department what excuse does an adult have Pray. you tell them i'll buy you sweets they won't forget they come back and say uncle my sweet they never ask whether you have the money 
because they expect you to be adult enough to check whether you have money first before speaking now you learn that thing and when god says i know the thoughts i think towards you like a child you don't start asking lord where will the uncle come from no. you stop learning when pride close your eyes may humility open it tonight so that you can see what is going on you see that's why many of us don't know what god is doing in the body we only knew what he was doing with us in our little corners and we get up and say revival is coming when it has started since because you were not there the virgins had oil but they could not go to the market there were others who had in abundance but the foolish virgins did not get more a time came their own finished they had their own oil but they would have gone to get some more the same way joshua selman has anointing but i need to get some more from benny Hinn. i need to get some more from kenneth copeland i need to get some more because the challenges in the future at this my level of anointing will eat me as if i'm not anointed so i will not allow the pride because of the level god has brought me now believe that i can stand benny Hinn's kind of challenge so i need the grace so i will listen when pastors come to me for counseling there's nothing that humbles me more than that and some of those people are anointed people dr luca and dr john sent me a text and they said apostle we are coming over and i said oh dear i love you when i was told i was told that since around 4 a.m or so this is the assistant chaplain he's also a man of god himself but he came here since around four to sit down what is there about a man the veil has been torn and it tears and you do you don't enter the veil has been torn you are still poor the veil has been torn you are still this whereas you can humble yourself and say every house is built by some man but god is the builder of it all there are people who must assist you in life otherwise you will never rise it's not pride One of the things that God helps me to do at the beginning of the year, I go and our daddy escorts me to go and meet the pastors of CGC. I go and greet them and get down on my knees. With just a little, I honor them and I get down on my knees and the pastor and his wife, they speak and prophesy over me and lay hands over me. I won't come and say, see crowd. No, there is a grace. If I were their age, I don't know if I would submit to a small boy like this. So Lord, help me. Before this pride that comes with middle belt and kill me. Where we don't have anything yet, we make a lot of noise. Lord, deliver me from it. So that I can look at one of these, our little ones tomorrow. And say, Apostle, I saw myself laying hands on you and I said, do it. The girl is shaking. I said, I said, do it. And she lays hands and from that day you enter a dimension of revelation you can sit and say god forbid transfer it to another adult let me receive it from the adult and god says you will never get it that way are you blessed yes imbalance is dangerous is why we have not seen i remember years ago i tried to pray for a woman i think somewhere in abuja also i can't remember I prayed for that woman I have never felt helpless before a sick body like that day you know how you pray and you know that there's no hope of that prayer being answered under that condition I couldn't feel any anointing the woman just stood there it saddened me I encouraged this woman koinonia no koinonia had not even started it was just about to start I said Lord how can a man be this helpless I came in your name bragged in your name if you see the scriptures i was quoting quoted this 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 the kingdom of god is not in word but in power and all that there was no power yet the bible say in my name i did it it didn't work that meant i need to submit to somebody who has the eyes of the spirit to tell me what the bible was saying because it's clear i did not get what jesus was saying are we together and yet i watched benny Hinn climb up the stage before he raised one worship song 40 wheelchairs 40 brothers and sisters this thing is not magic if you don't have it find it because it is there 
if it is not in your life it is not missing it only requires the humility to search you desire the prophetic and it's not in your life it is available it will take your humility to search man of god i've prayed but i know god has directed me but i do not know whether or not god is calling me to kogi or lafia and the moment you are talking the lord just tells the person lafia and he says the lord is sending you to lafia in one minute the word of the lord came because of your humility to align instead of fasting for 100 days and you hear lafia just when you round up the fast you hear a quiet bomb and as soon as you round up the fast you hear just you see that whatever is a limitation to you we are going to pray please listen carefully whatever is a limitation to you the word limitation is relative everything you need is already resident within the body if your life is poor god did not make it so you ignore the grace that conveys that possibility if your prayer life is dead it is not god's will you have ignored the envoys that he has put that supply of the spirit upon if you do not have access to the deep things of god it is because pride has made you to take away the relevance the necessity of the word of god i look at people and with all humility i know they have stopped growing they've not backslidden but they put a peg around their lives simply because they cannot open their door and say oh god bring in other dimensions that are not here they stood there and you know that's not their best that's not their greatest hallelujah praise the lord tonight is my prayer that god will deliver us from the error of imbalance that we will escape the danger of imbalance 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 that we will not trivialize the dimension of god that is required for our lives all dimensions cannot be in your life but all dimensions can work for you listen carefully all dimensions cannot be in your life it's impossible but all dimensions available can work for you meaning that it's impossible for me to be as prophetic as ever as apostolic as ever as evangelical as ever no there is the limitation that god puts i can be benny hin and kenneth copeland and joyce mayer and td jakes and bishop oyedeko and papa Ia Deboe at the same time with the same degree no sir i have to be one of them but i can enjoy what is on bishop oyedeko papa adeboe benny hin i can enjoy it through the humility of participations the word koinonia sharing together the ability to extend your hand through humility to say sir I have seen the dimension of God's grace in your life and I'm open to let it work in my life and honor becomes the key to that access and all of a sudden you find out that what was a mountain to you is trivialized under a certain kind of grace people have prayed for me in my life I have been a product of many people's prayers I have been surprised at how powerful the body of Christ is I have prayed for people and sometimes I look at what they call a mountain and I am shocked because I know how easy that problem can be solved and in my mind sometimes I wonder where, where were you why did you allow it to get this bad before locating the body for help are we together there is something tonight that you need in God for you to move to the next level that is not yet in your life but it is available and for many of us the error of imbalance has made you to think that because your life cannot produce it it cannot be produced so you just say if it was for me God would have brought it directly through me and just because it didn't come directly through me then it's not important please hear me prosperity is as important as healing healing is as important as prayer 
prayer is as important as visions are we together salvation is as important as mental transformation mental transformation is as important as your health and hygiene stay in your area of calling but do not allow imbalance make you trivialize what god is doing god is not only walking in koinonia brothers and sisters god is walking across zaria god is walking across the north god is walking across africa it is only a privilege for us to be at the level that we are now in his program it's a privilege for us to be contributors that's the word contributors that you can come and listen to the supply of the dimension that god has put in me of course administratively speaking it it is important for you to be able to stay in your area of whatever ministry or whatever church you are part of for the purpose of administration and leadership however let me tell you the truth any man that indoctrinates you into camping around him alone and all the dimension revealed to him whether in the name of mentorship or fatherhood has deceived you if i am your spiritual father it means you have taken you have come under my authority but it does not mean that i represent all of christ to you i represent the voice and the speakings of god in your life but i must have the flexibility to allow you grow and this is my goal god knows i get materials that have nothing to do with me i send it to people in the ministry listen listen to it this will bless you it bless me so much Are we blessed? We are going to pray. Father, my, my father would have prospered if only he listened to that prosperity preacher. He said prosperity preachers are rubbish. Now my father is an evangelist who has lost his house. Although a preacher of the gospel. Lord, my arrogant business partner father would have been such a man of prayer and he would have seen that accident before it happened but he ignored it because he thought everything was money and he neglected the place of prayer and evil came sat in our house and there was no eyes to see and nobody to manipulate things from the realm of the spirit and we died that death was not caused by god the refusal to tap from what god is doing closed your eyes until there was destruction there's nobody to help me in school no if only you listen to the person that god used to say go to this church you would have found somebody who would have sponsored you it is your refusal because you never believe that there are people kind enough to sponsor you without strings attached and your imbalance did not allow you to tap into that dimension tonight i want us to start with a prayer of repentance lord forgive me for trivializing your other dimensions scattered across the body thank you for what you have shown me as a man of god lord forgive me for insulting business people forgive me for calling prosperous people wasters of your time lord i forgive me for calling prayer warriors hungry noisemakers forgive me for insulting deliverance forgive me for insulting the prophetic i ask for mercy for insulting people who transform the mind in the place of prayer forgive me for thinking those who are the the personal development experts are useless to your agenda forgive my ignorance that has come through imbalance this imbalance has cheated me and my life has lost the flavor that should be go ahead and pray the reason why i am not blessing all things is because imbalance has pegged a dimension of god from my life if i opened up myself to the healing ministry i would have carried that healing anointing my church would have been a church that experienced this healing i rejected the prophetic and now confusion is destroying my life lord i ask for mercy i've exaggerated the prophetic and I've left the word of God. Now I've gotten into witchcraft and error. I've become a slave to prophets. Have mercy on me. And let me return back to the word. 
have been so obsessed with power and signs and wonders that there is no place for spiritual growth being grounded and established in the word of God all I look for now is power Lord have mercy take away that imbalance from my life outside make sure you are praying everywhere pray the error the danger the destructive calamity that imbalance brings Lord I've ignored the anointing and all I do is just an empty theological Bible study without the power without grace so my church my business my family has no genuine anointing Lord, I open up myself to the dimension of authentic power. Lord, I rejected excellence. I thought it was just about prayer and Bible study and healing the sick. I rejected excellence. Now all my TV programs are not accepted because they don't match a level of excellence. I have wasted resources because of lack of excellence. There are certain partners and helpers that excellence would have drawn to my ministry but lack of excellence threw, threw them away I received that dimension pray hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray there is not maybe not in koinonia but I observe the body of Christ and I see a widespread of prayerlessness people don't pray again pray for me that's the language of people oh you are going for please pray for us so and people don't pray you know why because in a bit to balance this we have insulted every prayer warrior insulted anyone any church that prays oh, these are just noise makers it's all about money and we have found out that there is no sensitivity in the body no discernment People don't pray people don't travel gone are the days when you see people lock themselves somewhere and cry to the God of heaven now people fast and all they just want cheap things oh man of God let me sow a seed just touch my head there are some things it's not just by impartation you must stay and cry upon the horns of the altar till something falls upon you from heaven we are going to pray one prayer and say lord what dimension is needed for my next level open me up unto it oh god lift your voice and pray lord if it is the prophetic that will take me to my next season then i open up my spirit for it if it's the miraculous that will take me to the next dimension if it's a healthy mental transformed mind lord i receive that dimension i will pray in please if it's a restoration of fire upon my altar that is the requirement for the next dimension i receive it if it's the knowledge of administration and excellence that i need lord balance my life lord balance my life balance my church balance my business balance my understanding balance my life balance my life Take away from me the sarcasm for prophets. Take away the sarcasm for Bible study. Take away the sarcasm for prayer. Take away the sarcasm for diligence. And Lord, let me incorporate these dimensions as coming from you. Hallelujah. Listen to me, we're rounding up. There are very anointed people, very anointed people who don't know how to speak before great men. Because to them, every gathering of people is a church service. And then God sends you now to your destiny helper and you don't know how to speak. And they throw you away back to the prison. Although you can interpret dreams, you didn't understand the protocol of sin Pharaoh because you ignored the person who can teach you how to communicate. So you find out that the ministries never cross Nigeria 
because no other region can accept you you have not been trained to understand global leadership and you don't know how to synergize spirituality with people's culture you travel to another person's culture they jail you as a man of god because you do not understand the terms there are other ministries that the revelation god is giving them should go to the whole earth but your resentment for wealth has kept you poor and so nobody can hear your voice no tapes no books no nothing because prosperity that will give it wings is not there i can look at a congregation and tell in a split second the dimension they are ignoring because i see prayer warriors who the the oldest person there may be 60 years no car no house no school fees the moment they are driving children from school fees is all is all the prayer warriors children that return back home because they have ignored it now let me tell you something about imbalance your imbalance makes you represent misrepresent god to your territory because they are depending unbelievers are depending on the idea you give them about god make sure you give them a balanced perception don't present to them a god who empowers people and removes prosperity don't present to them a God who all that he does is to give them money and their spiritual lives. They are not saved. They are not born again. They are going to hell, but they have money. That's a misrepresentation. Don't present to them a man of God that is anointed, anointed, and there's no room to teach the word. So you have a congregation of members that never grow. You have occultists in churches and they never, never grow. They don't understand the principles. They destroy their homes. Half of a church is divorced with people because the teaching ministry, there is no teaching priest. There is power, but there is no wisdom to share the ministry that keeps homes together. Are we together? Or you can have a crowd of people who never pray. The prayer warrior in that whole church prays only for one hour because that dimension has been ignored. We're going to pray one last prayer. Balance my life. Balance my life. Lift your voice and cry. Balance my life. Lord, I receive leadership. Lord, I receive prayer. Lord, I, see, I receive wisdom through the word. Lord, I receive favor. Lord, I receive excellence. Lord, I receive the warfare dimension. I receive the prophetic I receive the deliverance dimension of the world. Every provision that the grace of God affords, even if it is not working in my life, I am open-minded towards the body. No criticism and no resentment. I repent from criticizing any and every man of God. Regardless of the limitations, I open myself to the multifaceted dimensions of God resident within his ecclesia I receive the dimension that brings speed I receive the dimension that brings establishment I receive the dimension that brings glory I receive the dimension that brings increase I receive are you praying Lord until now I've not seen the need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I thought it was just something for Pentecostals. But right now I open my spirit to receive. It's a dimension needed in my life. In your name We will rise I don't know you reign in your name. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer. Lord, put a dimension of love for the body in me. Love, love. When there is no love, criticism will remain. When there is no love, sarcasm and resentment will remain. Open your mouth and cry. Love for the body. Love for every church. 
love for every man of God regardless of their dimensions regardless of their limitations regardless of their imperfections Lord we embrace them we love them if they are part of the body they are the beloved lift your voice no longer will I resent any man of God no longer will I resent any church no longer will I resent any fellowship any gathering of believers my propositions against them may be legitimate but it still is not enough reason even if you are not part of them wish them well even if you are not part of that church wish them well even if you are not part of that prayer group wish them well even if you are not part of that Christian organization wish them well you are not part of the mission agents wish them well talk well about them talk well about their leaders hallelujah let me pray a prayer for you from the depth of my heart I want to pray for you listen I have gotten more results in my life from loving the body than from praying believe me I have gotten more results in my life just from loving the body than I have from my prayer life there are things I have not prayed for the love for the body brought it to me there are dimensions that my love I love the body of Christ there is no way I've not ministered and there is no way I will not minister there is no way I will see a man of God and have to turn and leave him and say oh you are from this no I have many friends today great people we don't believe many things we don't agree in many things yet it is still too small a reason you don't have to agree with people to love them you must agree to work together but you can disagree and still love them you believe in tongues I don't believe in tongues no problem you pray your tongues we can work together but I can love you you believe in finances I don't believe in finance no problem I sit with my broke life after all Lazarus and Abraham they all went to heaven so you can sit the way you want and shortchange change yourself you believe in finance you don't believe in prayer okay fine I, I can but this hatred do you believe in finance no go do you believe in prayer I know do you believe in wearing trousers no go do you believe in tying your hair no go do you believe in praying shouting no don't do that don't do that don't ever be part of that nonsense you will think it's a good thing until you watch yourself destroy yourself are we together listen when you come to my house I have a modus operandi I have a system in my own house because it is my house but when I go to your house even if I see what is not permissible in my house in your house I must sustain a system of accommodation there is a way we do service here in koinonia you don't except someone is under the anointing you don't see somebody just run and come and fall down here he may kneel down may lie down there but you don't find that there are churches you go to that during praise and worship the man of god is jumping another member outside will come and be jumping with the man of god and they are sweating don't just see that and say god forbid what is going on here be careful in the midst of the lampstand christ is still there are we together you don't come and then you see a woman just because she's not wearing a ring she's standing and I see all these people we have moved past this level and you just say who is this woman humble yourself and sit down and say Lord let this woman speak to me you don't come and just because you see a woman maybe not covering her hair or whatever preserve your perspective as revealed to you by God but you must give allowance for the diversity of the body there are things I believe it will never change. No matter where I go to, there are convictions. Are we together? But I'm able to open up myself. And when I go to certain regions, I make sure that I go through the sacrifice of aligning to their understanding. There are places I cannot fly a shirt like this to go and minister. Not because it is wrong. The context of their understanding will not allow them to receive of the grace of God upon my life there are even some that I cannot even wear suit because once your suit is excessively clean and flashy that in itself 
may not even suggest that you are serious spiritually so i can decide to just wear something that is plain even traditionals i may not even wear something with many colors is the sacrifice so that there will be minimal distraction so they can receive it's called love for the body when you love the body there is no sacrifice that is too great if you are going to a church and they say to enter this church cover your head no i won't do this god carry your wrapper cover your head and enter and see jesus and let jesus minister to you and you go back when you do this you will see how your life will begin to grow because when the prophetess is coming and she's on trouser, i don't say oh this is no what are you saying when the woman is coming and she doesn't have any earring when the man is coming and all of a sudden you see him looking poor and wretched you don't say all oh, this poor man what do you have to tell me when we do this then the lapses in our lives will be closed and we will see a new church that is rising complete perfected by the diversities of the body therefore i pray for you in the name of jesus the grace to receive the multifaceted dimensions of god released through the body i release it upon you right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you that the grace to be and remain unresentful towards the body unresentful towards any and every church receive that grace i cast away from your life the spirit of cynicism and criticism based on differences that you do not appreciate i command that spirit to live your life forever i plant in you the fortitude to accommodate dimensions that are inconveniencing to you in the name of jesus christ the grace to overlook the weaknesses and the limitations in the body so as to receive the grace upon her receive it in jesus name the grace to sacrifice your convenience so as to find a dimension of christ resident within certain inconveniencing spheres i release that grace upon you now in the name of jesus christ every dimension of god that should be working in your life and is deficient in the name of jesus christ i pray that by the mercy of god may he navigate that dimension back to your life in the name of jesus christ i pray for the spirit of humility that the pride that makes you see or think that any other person who is not you is not needed in your spiritual growth process i take away that pride forever in the name of jesus christ and finally i pray for you from tonight may you begin to execute an uncanny level of spiritual balance balance in the communication of the word of god balance in the dispensing of the anointing balance in your prosperity work balance in administration and excellence balance in character balance in wisdom and mental transformation balance in your passion for soul and souls and the evangelical dimension balance in the prophetic balance in your understanding of christ balance in your understanding of satan balance in your understanding of every dimension of your work with god i plant upon you an anointing for balance in the name of jesus christ wave your hands to jesus thank you thank you jesus please let's keep standing everyone i want to pray right now for people here who have never please keep standing let's honor this who have never made a genuine decision for jesus you are an overflow one two three online whatever part of the nations of the world you are here and you are saying apostle if you will pray with me i am willing to hand my life entirely to jesus or you are saying apostle i love jesus but it is this imbalance that has robbed me of a dimension of spiritual seriousness i need fire i need restoration 
aside from overflow three i would request just for overflow three to walk to their projector stand because of distance if you are here overflow one and two and the main auditorium you are part of these people that have called to give your life to christ to rededicate your life and your all to him wherever you are please leave your seat very quickly and come up here very quickly let's appreciate them as they do so please very quickly very quickly there has to be someone who is saying apostle i am ready don't wait for someone to be the first make your way be bold bless you darling i believe there are more people if they are coming from outside clear the way for them please don't be ashamed make your way make your way quickly 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 we have just one or two minutes for that overflow one overflow two god bless you make your way quickly the spirit of god is speaking to you and saying son daughter it's time to have a new beginning it's time to start afresh are you still coming there has to be some more people there has to be some more people lord i run to you as the deer pans after the water brooks my soul thirsts for you come 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 god bless you hallelujah now all of you in front i want you to um just repeat after me i want to lead you to a very genuine genuine prayer of salvation let your heart be open god bless you people are still coming overflow three you can walk to your projector stand those online just listen to the prayer and follow along by faith lift your right hand and say truthfully speaking and passionately after me say lord jesus say it again lord jesus this night i have heard your word i declare say it i declare that I love you with all my heart this night I make Jesus the Lord of my heart I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare tonight that I'm a child of God my sins forgiven a new life given to me I receive grace to live a victorious Christian life I receive grace to live a balanced Christian life. I receive grace to love the body of Christ and to receive from the body of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you for bringing these ones. I pray that you will keep them. Let the grace that brings, the grace that keep, and the grace that lift, let it be released upon them. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that these ones will begin a journey from tonight that will only lead them to conformity, conformity, greatness, glory, power. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that every dimension of you that is missing in their lives, that by the mystery of the body, you will bring it back to them. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Now, please, I want you to follow. Uh, there's a lady waving her hands, all of you this way in front. There should be someone at Overflow 3, and so you can follow. Please follow her right now. The light may be covering you, but there's someone at the other side of the light. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I hope it's Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. To 
please be seated just for a few minutes and we'll be upstanding Second Chronicles 7 verse 14 If my people The first three words They are my people So we are not talking of those who are not my people But if my people more so they are called by my name he said they shall humble themselves he didn't say they shall say i am sorry repentance is not brokenness brokenness is deeper than repentance he says and shall seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will i hear from heaven i will forgive their sins and i will not heal them i will heal their land their territory not just heal them but their territory the absence of a broken and contract spirit is for many of us the mystery behind not only the tragedies of our lives the continued patterns and the reign of darkness over families over territories over individuals that you are a Christian is not enough Brokenness is a state that God cannot deny. What is brokenness? Brokenness is a state of complete surrender. Number one. Number two, brokenness is a recognition of your imperfections and your inadequacies outside of the mercy and the help of God. This is called brokenness. A recognition of of your inadequacies and your imperfections outside of the mercy and the help of God. Brokenness is a spiritual strategy that God designed to kill pride in the life of men. Brokenness is a system in the kingdom. It's a strategy invented by the wisdom of God to kill pride in men. Let me tell you this. Pride is behind the many sufferings of people not sin pride pride nobody really suffers for being a sinner we suffer because of our pride our parents suffer because of pride it's not their shortcomings it is the refusal to acknowledge that every man is inadequate without God are we together is God speaking to us the power of genuine brokenness. It's a strategy that kills pride. It's a strategy that kills a sense of self-sufficiency. One of the greatest unbecoming of believers. That sense of self-sufficiency. I can do without God. I can do without him. I can live without him. Lord, when I have a challenge in my life, I will call your attention to help me. Are we together now? Yes. It doesn't mean that God is not involved, but you keep him until you feel it is, with, it is beyond your power. Then you say, Lord, can you quickly come and just help me and then go back? A broken and a contrite heart is a heart that is perpetually living in the revelation that outside of God, I am inadequate. Are we together? Psalm 34 verse 18. Please give it to us. Psalm 34 verse 18. Psalm 34 and verse 18. Please read it. It's projected. One to read. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart he said and save it such there are certain people that qualify for his salvation the bible says people who are of a contrite heart that's the reason why you can see some persons will come to church are we together they come they don't have faith are we together 
they are not even walking in holiness and righteousness as we know but they come with a genuine sense of brokenness and the whole service becomes about them something about the sincerity of their heart attracted God are we together notice the kinds of people that attracted Jesus in his ministry he, he was hardly attracted by the scribes and the Pharisees he would see the sinners and go to them they caught the woman with the issue uh, with, with, with adultery she didn't argue and said no 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 and Jesus came and helped her remember when he met the woman who had six husbands five and the sixth one was not her husband look at how Jesus took time to reach out to these people let me tell you there is one attribute I know a man can possess that will attract God in a helpless way is a broken and a contrite heart are we together yes that a man can cry unto God from a state of brokenness and say Lord if you do not help me my family will not rise we have broken all the laws of financial prosperity we have broken I'm not a tighter we are not tighters we are not givers Lord if you don't help us we are finished and you will watch the Lord treat them like he treats the lilies of the valley that do not sow neither do they reap yet because they are his creation he will get up and reach out to them in mercy every time people were broken and contrite God responded to them in the book of Jonah there was a strange prophet that God gave an instruction to go to Nineveh and warn them you know why Jonah refused he knew God he knew they would repent he was praying that their, their hardened heartedness would remain so God would punish them for him and he ran away and God drew him back he said go back and the Bible says when Jonah announced that the people broke themselves in fasting and ashes even their animals fasted these were not people who were believers they were not even of the covenant but they became broken every time people were broken God no longer asked them where they came from a broken and a contrite heart the opposite of pride he said a broken and a contrite heart he will not despise let me tell you this when you walk with God we teach these principles your results at a level in the spirit will no longer be based on the accuracy of your applying this principle but that you have come to a place where you have become the friend of God it is important to teach these principles but I submit to you a time will come in your walk with God it's no longer about what you are doing you have won his heart in a way and manner that he has become vulnerable to you you will see things you did not pray for you will enter dimensions you did not fast for because you have maintained a state of genuine brokenness the prodigal son left packed his wealth and went to live a riotous life is that true the bible says one day he came to himself that's what must happen to many people in this day one of this fast he came to himself and said come how many hired servants does my father have while I sit down here and die with the pigs what is there to be ashamed of I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say father I have sinned against heaven and against you and I am not worthy you gave me resources I squandered it in a riotous way the Bible says while he was afar off as soon as the father saw him he ran to him notice the father never asked him so where were you all the while a broken and a contrite heart is a magnet for the help and the mercy of God a broken and a contrite heart this is a principle that not only works for God it works for men are we together as wicked as we are as men when you find a man that is broken towards you no matter how hard you are you become as soft as a tissue paper the reason why many of us have lost favor we have lost opportunities we are humans and it is true that at some point you made decisions that was not wise or whatever it is our parents 
you fought with your boss they fired you something happened but we we thought we were repentant but we were not broken you see brokenness has a spirit you can know a man can come and say sorry hey, jimmy please i want to work for you again sorry and you know that this is just this is just apology this is pride on rampage brokenness has a character it's an unashamed acknowledgement of your humanity and how much it can shred you into pieces except God helps you there are people who have gotten their jobs back not because they qualified they came with brokenness there are relationships that have been restored because the individuals could be broken enough are we together there are business connections that have come back because of brokenness listen to what i'm teaching you tonight it's a very deep mystery david was a man who understood brokenness thoroughly 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 isaiah 57 verse 15 quickly let's look at it isaiah 57 verse 15 for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity listen whose name is holy it says i dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to do what to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones there are people who are qualified for revival like a dry and thirsty land as a man of god you have come to your wit's end as a businessman you have come to your wit's end and you come to the lord and say lord i am broken i acknowledge that if you do not help me i cannot do anything and god shows up for you someone can be holding his stick of cigarette under a bridge and just sit down and say god i don't know if you are there but you need to help me it's not like i like my life I'm sitting this way. Please arise for me. Brothers and sisters, no prayer and fasting, no fill with the Holy Ghost for his spiritual eyes to be opened. There an angel is sent from heaven and it comes to that person there. His brokenness is a magnet. It drew the hand of God. I have seen God visit families that broke every spiritual law I know. Learn the laws of the spirit. Your humanity will necessitate them. Learn them. One of it is brokenness. Are we together? Yes. David was a man who understood God. God, don't give me to my enemies. Punish me by yourself. I choose your own way. And God said, this man, this man. How many young people have lost the favor of their loved ones because they do not have a heart of brokenness. You used to live a wayward life by saying, am, am I not getting well behaved? Is my father not seen? There's no brokenness. Genuine brokenness. I have seen people who are genuinely broken. I have seen, I have advocated for people who have offended their destiny helpers. And I saw the level and the extent of their brokenness. I felt guilty leaving them that way. I went out of my way to broker reconciliation. This is me, a man. Take over, Jehovah. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. Jehovah, I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. So take over, Jehovah. I have come to the end of myself Jehovah, Jehovah I have touched the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah what 
what I'm sharing with you. This is a very powerful revelation. These are the kinds of people that all things work for their good. They know what to do to God to change equations. You will look at them. It is true their family should be cursed. Their father was a herbalist. It's true he slew one of the sons. It is true that an ordinance is speaking against them. And he goes before God. He says, Lord, I, I don't come in my own righteousness. I come before you. Oh God, I never lied that I was a herbalist. I never lied that I collect the charm. It was out of pressure I came before you. Who else will I run to? And God says, who is calling me? Who is call which family is calling me? And while repentance is going on, one devil is there concocting a charm. That man cannot pray in tongues. That man does not even know which scripture should be. He cried and God showed up and said, because of what you have done, I enter a covenant with your children's children that all of them will be the head. And you find out that three generations afterwards, all leaders, not because they fasted, their brokenness was a covenant. Are we together? Show me a man that understands brokenness and I show you a man whose end you will never see. You will never see. I am convinced. Now, and, and I don't say this in a state of sarcasm. I say this sincerely. I am convinced that when people fall to a point that their chapter closes, the, a level of pride was responsible for that. Are we together? Hmm. Peter saw Jesus Christ and because of the pressure he ran away and betrayed him it was not a lie when Jesus came to him in John 21 he said little children have you any catch he said cast your net to the right side when they caught fish Peter realized it was Jesus the same Jesus he had betrayed three days ago the Bible says he ran away he said go away from me I am a sinner this is not the issue of condemnation it's a recognition Jesus I did this to you and you still come to me I disappointed you I told everyone I did not know you I took advantage of your benevolence but I come to you and Jesus said, Simon, this attitude has earned you something. Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. You qualify to be the leader. This is the kind of attitude that is leader worthy. An attitude that is unashamed before me. There are many proud people moving up and down. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't look for women. I don't look for men. And our pride keeps us there. Every time we see people rolling before God and crying their hearts, we sit down there with a sense of self-perfection, full of our pride, full of our jealousy, full of our lust. Just because it has not yet manifested does not mean it's not there. And when there is an opportunity to cry before God, we sit down saying, "Ah, uh -uh, you mean that lady is also praying wow thank god oh koinonia is helping some people a broken and a contrite heart a heart that is unashamed before god a heart that can roll from end to end and say lord you are the helper you are the coverer you are the defender of my life the psalmist knew this he said, I'm aware that many are they that trouble me. Many are they that look, they pray for my downfall. If you do not understand brokenness, you will fall like a chicken. It will surprise you. Your rising has a side effect to many people. And they hope and pray daily that something happens in your life. And if you understand brokenness, you have held God in a way and manner that he will never leave you. This I know about God. A broken and a contrite. Believers are very proud people. We exaggerate the teachings of faith. We exaggerate the teachings of righteousness. And it makes us proud people. And we cannot tremble at his word. And allow his spirit to walk on us. That's why there is no power. That's why there is no grace. That's why there is no favor. That's why there are no results. A sense of self-sufficiency. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. 
Take over. Take over. I have come to the end of my life. Hallelujah. 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 I have come to the end of myself. Brokenness is a mystery that attracts the mercy and the help of God to a man's life. A mystery that attracts the help and the mercy of God. When God is ready to show you mercy, do you know God can help men? How many of you believe that? Do you know God can help men? Ha! There are very few people that have seen the help of God. This is not men favoring you. This is God deciding that I want to help you. I have helped people in my life by the grace of God and I have seen how easy their lives became because I could reach out to them God can turn to a man and say me Alpha Omega I have decided to come to your family to help you it will surprise you what will happen most of us do not know what the help of God can do he said I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help not my neighbor's own I don't know how he gets his own but my help you see us like this the name of this ministry is Ebenezer a ministry that has been helped by God helped spiritually helped with grace some of these mysteries are not just a product of personal research some of them are a sheer help of God that God comes to you by himself and says I want to help you God can help men when God helps you something will change about your life there are many families that don't help have the help of god because our loved ones are there in their pride and arrogance i think we should go and see a man of god i know god too and god says you see you see it now a broken and a contrite heart let's go and cry to god ah, didn't i tell my wife sorry didn't i tell my husband sorry there's no brokenness genuineness some of us seated here this is the one limitation that makes satan to buffet our lives and yet god seems to stand helpless everybody say genuine brokenness genuine brokenness that a man can come to a point where he goes to god i remember a woman who shared her, her testimony very touching testimony she was staying in a house um, a, a, a rented apartment very wealthy man you know somewhere in abuja and true story she could not pay you know there was no way it's not the issue of give me time there's nowhere money is going to come from anywhere and the woman was broken because she still had the fees of her children this woman sent me a text by herself she said when she, it was very obvious that the boss was the the owner was going to drive her that the woman said she just knelt down before him and said you have children like this one and she was crying she said it's not my fault that my husband died i didn't kill him it's not my fault that i didn't have the opportunity to be educated i'm not lazy it's just condition that has kept me like this if you drive me where do i go to this woman started crying and according to what she told me that the man just kept quiet and looked at her and was touched he said i have children and i have conscience i will never do this he said continue to stay here it's not your own but just continue to say forget about rent because of this thing you have done i've given you this the help you know many of us want to seek help at our own terms pride and help don't go together are you hearing what i'm saying please emeka i hear you're a doctor can you treat me you are the one who is sick oh god are you not seeing what is this family is doing we need five million to solve our problems i come by the blood of the lamb as, as if you, you you ask him to die and in the name of jesus christ pride that's what the bible calls it i watch people all around from pastors to leaders and in all honesty i see that price oozing out desperate for help but not broken enough to receive it there are people who are desperate for help but the brokenness that qualifies them to receive <clears throat> their knees will not go to the ground i don't mean physically their knees will not go to they want to be helped but they want to be helped at their own terms 
sorry do you have 100 naira can you help me it's not by force if you don't have that's all right that's a proud man he's hungry he's in need and he's ashamed it's not my culture to beg i'm, I'm just it's, i just felt like and it's not usually what i do i just hope that you can help me pride those kinds of people never get the attention of god thou son of david thou son of david please thou you are the son of david others call you jesus but i i know what they've been saying about you have mercy i don't know what what it takes to stand up from here and i'm not sure i even have it Look at the father of that guy that was convulsing. He said, help my own belief. I don't understand this, your faith thing. I've done all I know to be faith. Please, if I'm not getting it right, if you leave me here to learn faith, this child can die before I finish learning it. Help my own belief. And God turned. Who is this? Notice how God was helplessly drawn to people who were broken. Is God speaking to us? Lord, I need your grace and I need your anointing. I'm not, I'm not coming to act as if we are colleagues. Lord, I'm standing. If you give me anointing, fine. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not ashamed. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come to I need thee, oh, I need thee Every hour I need thee Come bless me now, my Savior I come Listen, when you truly need help Don't act like you can do without it Are you hearing what I'm saying? brokenness is a force it can draw help to you there are many destiny helpers around us but our pride is what stops us from receiving help it doesn't take God anything to change a man's life overnight is this attitude of pride oh promise I hear that um, you are an anointed man can you just agree with me? I have issues in my life, uh, but if you are not, if you are free, that's all right. You expect that anointing to work? I'm not talking of human worship. It's the same way we approach God. We approach God with our pride and our sense of being. This is not condemnation. This is a recognition. If you hear the way I pray for Koinonia to scare you, you will think I killed a human being. Lord, it is by your mercy that you draw people. This afternoon, I just lay down on my bed flat and I'll say, Lord, it is by your mercy you change people. It is your voice that is able to change people. You are the only one who will draw people. I don't take for granted what you are doing. I will never act like I don't need you. And here he comes again, a broken and a contrite heart. What prophecy did you cancel through pride? What prophecy stopped working in your life? Because there was no genuine brokenness. This kingdom thrives on mysteries. I'm unveiling one of them for you. So that you will see. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. You want a new heart? You want to rise in the spirit? It takes brokenness. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26 was we're going to pray shortly very quickly it says a new heart also i will give you and a new spirit will i put within you i will take away the stony heart this is this is the heart of many of us here the stony and stubborn heart it says and i will give you a heart of flesh that's the bible let me show you one more scripture very powerful scripture i found jeremiah 24 verse 7 Jeremiah 24 verse 7 very solid scripture listen it says and I will give them an heart to know me that I am the Lord I will give you a heart that will make you know me it says and they shall be my people and I will be their God why for they shall return to me 
with their whole heart. It shall return to me with their whole heart. A broken and a contrite heart towards God and towards men. There are nations that would never go for war if their leaders can just admit we were careless, we compromised on the deal. I'm sorry. But millions go hungry and in war because of the pride of one person. Over my dead body, you hear them say, many of the yokes that are on our families came because of the pride of one person. One person. One person, one arrogant person. No. Over my dead body. And the Havali said to me, say yes. And we grew up in all kinds of yokes of darkness. How many people offended a very old woman, pushed her down. And she said, my daughter, what did I do? Leave me alone. Is it that you don't have eyes to see? And the woman looks. You say, you did this to me? Your children will do it to you. And the foolish girl moves around thinking that it's all about catwalking. And many years later, her innocent daughters come. Beautiful, wonderful people. When a man comes, as soon as he says, I love you, what will happen to him? He will leave you by himself. That's why God put this. If my people who are called by my name they are called by my name but the devil is still beating them left right and center he never said i don't have the power to save are we together he said but they shall humble themselves and then pray and then seek my face and turn from their wicked ways under that condition i will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sins and heal their lands go and watch the documentary about fiji island the revival in Fiji Island. That's what happened. Many years ago, missionaries came to Fiji Island and then the people slaughtered the missionaries and killed them. And the missionaries, when they slaughtered them, everything died in that land. The fishes disappeared mysteriously from the sea. It's a documentary you can go and watch. Everything went down. They will plant crops. Locusts will come from nowhere and devour it. And then one time, a group of Christians who had been exposed said, look, this thing is not just the issue of we are Christians. There has to be a way of making peace. Are we together? In the New Testament, restitution is not necessarily just about going back to go and say, oh, I stole five naira when I was five years. But restitution is a state in the heart. A genuine state this our pride in the body of Christ is why we don't see the power of God we just jump at anything just because of a little theological study we did here and there and do you know the people in the land came together intercessors began to pray a few weeks turned to months and one time in the midst of that prayer the spirit of prophecy came and he said look you people have to pray this land has taken the blood of those who were bearers of good news and they sat down they prayed and they cried before god they said lord you have to help us and fortunately for them they were able to get in touch with the grandchildren of the ministers they slaughtered and the christian missionary said it's true we have repented but since these people are there can't we reach out to them and they wrote a letter to them and the young people say we are not coming you people slaughtered our grandparents we had the story you didn't even allow us to see their body they removed their head and danced around with them in shrines and eventually the christian organizations called the people and they came and do you know they had it was like a ceremony they made peace they hugged them and the little children said no 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 our parents have died but their blood flows to us and you are repentant we bless you the people who did this thing have long died you shouldn't be the victims of this we bless you it was not up to one week they started seeing fishes mysteriously in the sea the water the vegetation go and read it fiji island the the like the president of fiji island officially dedicated the place to god
mysteries that people do not know and we cheat ourselves here and there a broken heart show me somebody who has offended God to whatever and can run to God and say Lord I come to you show me a man who has offended a human being and can run to the person genuinely remember Jesus taught about this in the parable of the servants on just servants one of them went and cried master forgive me and all of that and all of that and they forgave him and then he did not go to make peace with the other one and then they now dealt with him that story was a message that you can run to him and you can cry and he will hear you if my people if koinonia a ministry called by my name shall humble themselves most of us every time we hear this thing we just think it's just for sinners it's for bad people may god knows i've tried that thing is pride is pride when it's time to be broken before god you are broken genuinely lord it is by your mercy it is by your grace i need your help in my life men are getting more wicked i need your help I counseled a dear woman I'm sure she may be here and when I counseled her I saw the kind of trouble she you know as I counsel people my heart reaches to them I've been doing this for years there are cases when you hear you know that only God no matter how well meaning you are you can't help that situation the only and and the way they come to you man of God help me and you too you know that you can't help. it takes it takes only one who sits on God's throne to be able to help do you believe God can help you my life is a testimony of a man that God has helped God can help men it's a language we don't know most of our loved ones don't know it they believe men can help but they don't believe God can help the key is brokenness some of those who have received the mercy of God most are some of the most disobedient people. That's what pains some of us. Because you are roommates with them. And you see the way God keeps going out. The moment they are broke, oh Lord, an alert comes. And you are there, you come back from three days dry. Say, Father, I'm still here. Say, you, you will continue being there and you watch. There's no brokenness in your heart. Somebody comes and says, Lord, help me you know my situation there are people who God changed their exam scores because of brokenness they went to God and said Lord please help me I take responsibility I didn't read it is obvious that if this result comes out I have two years and they roll before God and cried I'm not talking of the mystery of a dance this is not dancing it's not every time you dance there are times you lie down and cry and God comes to them and all of a sudden the course comes out and you see a something they didn't finish answering question one out of five questions who taught us that God has stopped helping men he said Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped marvelously God can help a man of God and in one month your life and ministry will change god can help a family some of these things we are struggling with it takes god to help us you attract his help one of the things that i believe believers and i say this from the strength of counseling there are two spirits that believers must cry that god should help i know we are humans and i don't mean to condemn you masturbation and pornography two devils of darkness that the devil uses to tear people into pieces it starts from their dreams when something good is about to happen a breakthrough is about to happen there the spirit comes again and you find out that the favor goes then the urge leaves too I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours forever i'm yours i'm yours i'm yours 
fall asleep and here comes an angel sent from heaven and he comes to you just touches your stomach and you get up and go to the hospital doctor check me again and they say it's a joke where did you go to the helper the helper showed up in your house koinonia our families need help if we don't humble ourselves recession will punish us to our knees we need help there are families that need to come together and just get down on their knees from the greatest to the least to say lord i am the priest in this home but i'm officially lifting this family we need your help we are broken we are broken see the bible says even a thief when he's caught if the thief tells you i only stole because i was hungry he says pity him bible it, this is the holy god speaking that's why God will look at a prostitute somewhere and we say God condemn her and God looks in the midst of her prostitution what he's seeing is Lord I need help I've been doing this thing for 10 years but I need help and God suddenly sends a very powerful man of God he said that's your wife and you are there saying God this is cheating I've been in church God said well I promote who I can promote and demote any proud person I can demote This is the reason why we are angry at some people's results because it looks like it's not fair god should not help them with the way their lives are but god when your heart is right before god god will surprise you i am a keeper of principles but i can tell you this i have been committed to stand up and help people no matter how stupid they are because of something about their brokenness When you see me pray for koinonia and pray for my own life it, it will irritate you if you are praying with me i don't cry before men but don't be deceived i cry before god with my life i lie down before him and i say lord help me help me are you getting blessed we are going to pray this is what we must engage tonight many of us need to cry on behalf of our proud family members ten ladies no marriage go to the house of God God forbid all that place in that church that they gossip about people God wants where I won't come there I'm, I'm too no 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 I won't do that you can stand on their behalf and say Lord if you depend on my family's faithfulness you will never bless us Lord I'm advocating lord my father is a proud man but i cry for the sake of jesus for the sake of what the lord has done on the cross please step in for my family sickness is eating everyone lord we have broken every rule every law i now know it is true that my father has 10 girlfriends somewhere but lord if you use him to punish us moses knew what to do for israel god was angry he said these guys are in idolatry i will cause them moses said god calm down abba are you not merciful and compassionate do you want them to say you brought these people out and could not take them to the promised land and god repented whatever you answer me i 
This is the condition to see the mercy and the grace of God. Whatever you ask me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I surrender. That's my commitment. That nothing becomes too much to release to you. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I surrender. Just prophesy it as a song. We are going to pray shortly. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I surrender. time whatever you ask of me Lord whatever you ask of me I surrender whatever you ask of me I'm yours I'm yours I'm yours forever it's yours Before you start claiming right, tonight is a night of thorough brokenness before God. I'm going to give you the next five to ten minutes alone before we start praying corporately. Whether it's on your chair, just I'm going to leave you alone with God. Everybody, find a way alone with God. Break your pride, whether you are inside or outside. This is, you are alone with God. And say, Lord, mercy 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 for my family mercy for my finances for my spiritual life Lord, do not judge my family according to their iniquities, for they are many. Lord, do not judge my sisters according to their wrongs. Do not judge my brothers. Lord, if you do not show my mother mercy, there is no salvation. If you do not show my father mercy, Lord, save my territory. They are an idol-worshipping territory. They still worship idols. Have mercy. I come to you with a broken heart. Lord, there are charms in my house right now. I come to you with a broken heart. Pray. Pray. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. Lord, I'm yours. Lord, if you depend on my attitude, I will never get married. Lord, if you depend on my prayer life, then I will never see your hand. Lord, if you depend on my faith level, I will never break through in the spirit. But tonight I cry. I come to you with genuine brokenness. Forever, 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 forever. Pray, pray. Whatever you ask of me, Lord, I surrender. 
Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Lord, if you leave me to my results, I will never graduate. Lord, if you leave me to my jump score, I may never get admission. Where is the helper of my destiny? Arise for me. I cry before you. Oh God of Jeshurun, arise and take away the shame of my family. There are times in this kingdom I admit to you where it is not the quality of your keeping the mysteries of the kingdom but your ability to invoke the help of God through brokenness. There are businesses that the people don't know anything about finance. They cried before God and God arose and said, I choose to wipe your tears. There are families who based on the way they train their children all the children should be arm robbers and prostitutes but not one of them is a spoiled child because somewhere along the line the parents had to hold their hands together and say lord help us help us this cry can give you a job i tell you this cry can give you a husband based on the way you are no good man should come to you it's not a lie but the mercy the mercy of God just a few more minutes of genuine brokenness whatever you ask me say whatever you ask of me I surrender if you are not seriously praying you are a non-believer if you are not praying in this atmosphere genuinely then i'm telling you something is wrong with your passion for god lord let the desires of my enemies not come upon me whatever you ask of me i surrender there are many who lie in wait waiting for your family to fail to prove but that God by his mercy can fit you and help you oh God Oh, 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 as we call on your name, oh, oh, oh God, we pour out your mercy as we pray. for his help oh, oh, oh God as we call on your name oh, oh, oh God as we pour out your mercy Lord as we coming through for you. You are my 
strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my only all. I'm seeking you as a precious jewel. Not to give up, I'll be a fool. You are my only hope. One more time. You are my strength. You are my strength. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my only you are my Passionate, slow to anger and rich in love my Bible says his mercies are new every morning just one more minute and we'll pray corporately and we're done the Lord held the hands of Cyrus an unbeliever and prospered him because of the pride of God's own people he gave them over to their enemies it is not the witchcraft in your family that is killing you it is the lack of brokenness that is authorizing the spells to keep working there is a way your repentance can be so genuine the Lord will arise for you by his mercy. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. Ah. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Your deliverer is coming. Your deliverer is standing by. Prophesy to yourself two more times. My deliverer is coming. My deliverer is standing by. One more time. Sing. My deliverer is coming. I want you to arise like one who has touched the heart of God. We are going to engage in some 15 minutes of intense warfare. We are going to pound the gates of hell with faith. We are going to pray and say that accuser of my family. I have, bro I have been broken before God on behalf of my family. He will not lift a railing accusation against my father, against my mother. I come with the spirit of faith. Lift your voice and begin to blast in tongues. The Bible says, even the lawful captive, even the lawful captive, Pray, 
Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please shout it in the name of Jesus. I declare that every legal access for accusation, for oppression over my life, over my family, by the mystery of brokenness, I command it broken now. Lift your voice and pray. I silence the accuser over my family. I silence the accuser over Koinonia. The altar that accuses. The covenants that accuse. Hallelujah. Pair yourselves into two. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that everything associated with my lineage, my family line that the devil is using against me by the blood, I silence you. Hold the hands of your neighbor and pray. pray. I silence you. I silence you. Ordinances. Handwriting. Ordinances. By the fire of the Holy Ghost, Yapa, Nebo, Bete, Eti, Hebaka, Soto, Kata, Rekete, Kate, 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 Hallelujah. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. Oh God, you are my helper. Say it again, oh God, you are my helper. I have no other. I call on to you. Show up in my life. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Show up. Show up, oh God. By your mercy. Show up for me. Show up for me. Show up for my finances. Show up for my spiritual life. You are my helper. You are my helper. You are my helper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
One or two last prayer points and we finish. The Lord has declared that it's a year of signs and wonders. I told you a sign and a wonder is a miracle with a message on it. You are going to say, Lord, turn me. Pray, say in the name of Jesus. Father, I offer my life. Turn it into a sign and a wonder. Lift your voice and pray. Turn my life. Turn my life into a miracle with a message on it. Turn it into a miracle with a message on it. Turn it into a miracle with a message on it. Turn my life to a fearful sign of wonder. Turn my life to a sign of wonder. go pata, pati go pato, epre te peke, pato poro tus, peru sabade, paru tabade, agaru pata, epre te kene, edu sarato, agapute, pato po, kalada, ilatea, ilatea. Hallelujah. The last prayer, and then we'll share the grace. Hallelujah. You notice we didn't take testimonies today. We'll do it tomorrow. So when you come, I expect lots of testimonies. We'll do it tomorrow. But we're just starting today. We'll just take this prayer point and then we're done. Tomorrow we can welcome Shut new people and all of that. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Everything I have lost in the years past, I decree and declare by the power of brokenness, return back to my life. Open your mouth and pray. Everything. I call back friends. I call back opportunities. I call back graces. I call back mountains. I call my fire. Ebrakatane, Ebre te pedo, Poro patane, Abi te guta, Elu shaba, Ebre te elevata. Ola pataya ba. Hey, hey. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Hey, hey. Pato pere, Elu shaba, Agatu sha, Ebroto. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. We're still standing. I want you to maximize these times of prayer. Don't only pray when we come together. Are we together? The fire that is burning in this place will be burning for seven days. You can use the time. The sun is hot, but you can look for somewhere. Sit down and pray. I expect this revelation I've shared now. It should last you till evening tomorrow. So you go back and pray it. Wake up in the night and pray it. And curse that devil. When you hear the accuser declare brokenness. Call your parents and tell them help is on the way. Help is on the way. I know you are traditionalists. But help is on the way. Call them. Don't say I'm afraid it will not happen. We are talking about God here. Call them. The helper is on the way. I prayed for you. And God is coming. Hallelujah. Please be here on time. And when you come, don't come alone. This is not, you can see that there are people everywhere. But you have prayed tonight and you know there are some people who should be praying this prayer. Drag them and plead with them. That this is not a koinonia thing. This is God visiting a land. Bring them. This magical manifestation that people want will not work that way. You come and engage mysteries. 
and God will bless you. We are fasting. Please fast. These children are not too small to join us. If they do 6 to 10, it's alright. If they do 6 to 12, it's okay. Are we together now? Take out time and pray and fast. By Monday, I will give us the keys to the other days and what we are going to be doing. But take out time to pray. Yesterday's message has been uploaded. Get it and listen to it. You can wake up in the night, just play this song, find a song. Don't snore your way till morning. Even if it's 15 minutes in the night, maximize the night time. Get up and sit on the ground and just lie down and begin to reminisce on his faithfulness and begin to prophesy. You have to engage this thing to work. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. This is day one already. It won't reach day seven before you see the outstretched arm of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you already from tonight, this was your key for this prayer. That you have gotten this key, you will command signs and wonders again and again in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone who is sick here in the name of Jesus, be healed right now. I stretch my hands as an extension of the hands of Jesus and I rebuke every infirmity in your body. Be made whole right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.